Hello everybody, today I have another vlog for you. I think I've finally gotten together enough clips to make another one of these videos. Of course, I have some brand new thrift stores that I haven't been to before, and a brand new restore that I haven't been to yet to share in these videos. So let's go ahead and take a look at those. So there's actually two new restores that I haven't been to yet. This is the first one, and it's actually quite interesting in the fact of what I found. That bulb that I showed there for a split second at the beginning of this clip is the only thing that I bought at this restore, but that bulb is pretty cool and I'll share it here within this video. Other than that, there's a lot of random things sitting around, typical things that you would find at a restore. A lot of regular ceiling fixtures, there's an aquarium looking fixture and different things like that, some halogen outdoor floodlights like that one. And that shelving, definitely not what I'm looking for. Here are some PL fluorescent fixtures. They're preheat, obviously, and take a 7-watt 2-pin bulb. And there's the ballast itself. Looks like it does a variety of different lamps. I always like those fixtures. They're pretty cool, kind of vandal-proof. Here's a new thrift store. This is a pretty nice desk lamp. It's an F14 T8 or 12, depending on the type of bulb you want to put in it. But usually you find the 15 watt versions instead of the 14 watt ones. Now this is a pretty cool lamp. I always liked those fluorescent um, Luxo lamp type fixtures. However, I didn't pick it up because I don't really have a use for it. That was a pretty neat um, high pressure sodium grow light and that spiky bulb that my friend showed me. Also, here's some older designers edge CFLs. Just look at the design on those things compared to, well, now we have LEDs. But there's a whole variety of things. I had to go kind of quick because it, it was busy. There was people everywhere. So try not to get too many of them in the video. There's a preheat CFL, a grow light, and just random incandescence in containers. I did find some pretty cool things at the thrift store and the restore. So let's go ahead and take a look at those things. So let's see what I decided to get at some of these places. We'll start off with the Goodwill, the one that's an outlet, so everything's in the blue bins. I picked up some strands of C7 Christmas lights, so we'll start with those. Here is a 15 bulb strand. I'm not sure the manufacturer of this particular strand, but I cleaned it up with rubbing alcohol just to clean it because I have no idea where these things have been, and replaced some of the bulbs that were burned out with these red clear ones, which is something that I also picked up. So there's a strand like that with the um, individual you know, wires there. And then there's a second one right here, also 15 bulbs. But as you can see, the sockets are different. The clips are on the bottom rather than the side. So interesting. Same type of plug on it though. And then here's another 15 bulb strand. This one is made by GE you can see there on the plug. And there's some uh, GE bulbs in it, I think, unless I took them out. I don't remember. But um, some I replaced again with these red ones. <coughs> and then here is a 25 bulb strand, which is a little more common nowadays. Again, I don't really know who made this. It has a G on it. Uh, if anybody knows what brand that would be, but that's what it has. It still has its fuse, which I'm surprised hasn't fallen off over the years. See, this one also has the G on it as well, whatever brand that was. So, obviously, older to newer. But some very nice strands. Uh, they all work just fine, and most of the bulbs work too. I'd say about 10 of the bulbs uh, between all these strands didn't work at all. So I'm going to go ahead and move these out of the way. Now there were some bulbs in these strands that I thought are interesting enough to take out and keep aside and they're twinkling bulbs. So here's three of them from probably the same manufacturer and then the even better ones are these in here except for the orange one. The orange one is original to this packaging. Is some GE ones. The red one still has the etch on it 
The green one, it looks like they just totally missed it. And the blue one's slowly rubbing off. But they all work. Uh, of course, that one's original to this package. But these GE ones work. And so do these no-name ones as well. So those were within those strands that I just showed you. Um, and then this was also mixed in with some of those strands. It's a little three-bulb thing. I'm not sure what it was for, but you can see it's falling apart. I gotta fix it somehow. But everything's just kind of force fit together inside of there. So I gotta push this back in there. Let's see, it does still have its little tag on it here. It says safe tree. I'm not sure what this would have been used in, but my best guess is because this was in a huge bundle of those other lights. They were all just in a big ball. And I'm guessing that the flashers may have originally been used with this. Um, maybe this was inside of some type of decoration that had the three different colors flashing. I'm not too sure. So that's really interesting with the incredibly safe plug with the wires there. So definitely be careful with that. So that came from the uh, Goodwill outlet store. Let's see here. Okay, this came from uh, another Goodwill and it was a dollar for 25 red bulbs and this came from the same hardware store that I got these from and I don't remember if I mentioned this in another video. I think I did but if I didn't it's a local hardware store here. I think it's, I may just get this wrong, it's like McLinden Hardware or something to that nature. Um, if, I, if I remember correctly I think that's what it was called. But yeah, that's where these came from. And they have a whole aisle of C7 and C9 and it's really cool. And they sell these boxes as well. But for a dollar, not bad. Those are all the ones that I used in the strand there to um, replace the burnt out bulbs. But pretty cool. So uh, that is what I picked up at the other Goodwill. Well, actually the Goodwill that I got those 25 red bulbs at, I also found this. They're figural bulbs, and they're not as old as you may think. They're made by some Taiwan company, so I'm not sure what era this would be from, but it's definitely not, you know, like the C6 bulbs with the series circuit from back in the day. It does look like some type of a Noma strand, because I remember the Noma ones had this fuse in line like that. So I'm not sure um, what brand made this other than the information here on the side. But all the bulbs work. So that was really cool. This I picked up, I think it was $2.50. Not bad at all. Really cool bulbs. I think some of these are newer designs like the Snowmen and the Santas. But these three here are really thick glass. So I'm guessing they found the old molds to some of the old C6 uh, bulbs and reused that, but really cool. So that was a nice little thing to pick up. So then this past weekend here, I went to some more different restores that you saw in the um, beginning of the video. And the first one I went to, well, it was kind of the only new one, I picked up this. It's the one of those colored bulbs that has the special filters inside to only let blue light through. Now I'm probably going to say this incredibly wrong if it's dish row, de deck row, dish row color. I'm not too sure how to pronounce that. I probably just did it incredibly wrong. But these bulbs are incredibly hard to find. So for six dollars of course I'm going to pick this thing up. And here it is. It has, I believe if I remember reading about these, they're sprayed coatings inside on the other side of the glass here and it only lets certain wavelengths of light through. So it only will let the blue light directly through. But if you look at it from different angles when it's on, you'll see the other colors as well, but it's made to only let the blue light come through. And of course they come in multiple different colors, but it's pretty cool to find the blue one. And here is the etch on the side of the bulb, so definitely a video of this thing coming, and hopefully I'll know how to pronounce it better at that time. So, really cool bulb. I'm so happy 
that I found one of those. So, uh, a Goodwill I went to had this. A huge pickle jar, or whatever was in this jar, I'm not too sure, of C7 transparent bulbs. And they all work, I tested every single one of them for three dollars. Not bad at all. I did count them all too, there's 132 bulbs in here. And there's some pretty cool ones. Most of them are the same, but there's some pretty cool ones and you might see them right here. Like this one. A nice old pink GE. That's pretty hard to find, that's pretty cool. There's another one here, not as hard to find, but I used to, I used to think these uh, were like cinnamon because when they were on, they were such a deep, rich red and they got incredibly hot. So, really cool. Of course, here's a imitation pink one and a random orange one. But most of them are just these standard green, red, and blues, which probably came from one of these boxes because they look identical uh, in manufacturing to those. So I'm guessing somebody bought some of these boxes of bulbs, put them in there as a decoration, and that was the end of the story. And they must not have wanted it anymore because, well, here they are. And yes, that pink one does work. It's pretty cool. So, go ahead and put that cover back on. A pretty nice find for three dollars. I'm very happy with that. Now I'll have plenty of extra bulbs for my C7 sets. Okay, so the last thrift store I went to had this. These cool GE crystal bulbs. Now there's a name for these and I can't think of them off the top of my head. But they used to come in a pack of two, I believe. And the, there's three red ones, a blue one, that one used to be green, but it's obviously not green anymore. Um, and there's also a yellow one, which is right here. However, the base is coming off, so I'm going to find some glue that would be appropriate for this and glue it back on. But the bulb does work. I just want to preserve it the best I can because these are hard to find nowadays. We also have a... GE bulb here as well. It's just a standard green. You can see the GE logo on the side there. Pretty cool and there's the little weather washers to try to keep water out and things like that. Here's the ending plug on the set. Pretty common thing for the time. It's just soldered on there and there usually be a cover here to help protect that but there isn't. No manufacturer on it. Maybe somebody out there knows. Pick this up for $2. So here is a new Goodwill that I haven't been to before. It is in a very nice neighborhood, so there's a lot of higher-end items at this particular location. A lot of different lamps and odds and ends. A lot of higher-end electronics. Things like that. Here's a 60-watt Apple power adapter for a MacBook or MacBook Pro. Here's an iPad charger, which I did decide to pick up. I do like those 12 watt ones. They charge a lot quicker than the regular five watt ones and they work quite well. Here is another Goodwill that I have been to many times before and it's usually messy like this most of the time. At this Goodwill, I usually find some Apple products, whether that be adapters, well, it's usually adapters, uh, for reasonable prices, but I didn't see anything there today. But it's always interesting to look around because you never know what might be lying in all of these different bins. I decided to take this quick little clip at a Dollar Tree. A lot of them have these same bulbs, but sometimes you see something different. Not anything out of the ordinary here. Pretty typical stuff. So this is the second new ReStore. This is the one that I was referring to at the beginning of the video, but I forgot that I had a clip of that other ReStore, so there's actually two brand new ones in this video. Here's some of their lighting that they have outside as it was on clearance or sale or something like that. And here we are inside. They have some incandescent bulbs hanging here and a transformer, probably for a doorbell or something to that nature. 
a whole bunch of different adapters. I always like looking at these. There's usually a unique one in there somewhere, and I did pick a unique one out of there, and I'll show that here, of course. So let's take a look at some of the fixtures which were in a different location in the store. And these are pretty typical, you know, fixtures that you would see at a ReStore. Nothing incredibly special here. This is pretty cool though. Another one of these F15 T8 dual lamp fixtures. I always liked the look of these things. They're pretty cool, but I didn't decide to pick it up because I don't really have a use for it. Here's some outdoor fixtures and more typical stuff that you would, well, find at a ReStore. And a PL 13 watt under cabinet light. It's made by GE, if I remember correctly. There's that lamp at the bottom again. And some light bulbs, of course. Some more things hanging on this peg board on the wall. And here is the lighting that is hanging from the ceiling in the store itself. You can see a whole bunch of nice 8-foot T12 fluorescents. Here we are at another Goodwill that I haven't been to before. Surprise, surprise. Uh, one of these architect lamps that have the circle line bulb and then the incandescent in the middle, and there's a light falling down onto my foot because it was on the edge. But anyway, pretty cool light. I already have one of those in my collection. It's black instead of white. Here's a 8 watt preheat fluorescent strip light. I'm usually quite into those, but that one didn't have a replaceable starter, so it wasn't really worth it for me. Here's some of their incandescents and CFLs that they have sitting on the shelf. Pretty standard, but interesting enough stuff. So here we are at a St. Vinny's, and this is their box of light bulbs, some incandescent reflector bulbs, and standard CFLs in this particular box. But this was a really cool thrift store. I got a really cool lamp here, which I don't show in the video, but there was a lot of cool old electronics from video games to computer equipment to these two Apple keyboards here. One of them is Spanish, the other one is English, but a lot of really cool things that we enjoyed looking at at this particular thrift store. I usually don't do videos at the Goodwill outlet stores because they're just so chaotic and messy, but I thought this was interesting enough to take a little clip of. Usually don't see that kind of stuff at these locations. Last night there was a severe thunderstorm in the area, so we lost power until hmm, probably 11 o'clock or something. I'm not too sure I wasn't here. I decided to go to the Second Use Building Material Place, which you already saw a clip of, I'm sure. If not, we'll take a look at it now. Here we are at the Second Use Building Material Place, as I like to call it. Why do I add the word place at the end? I'm not too sure. I just do. That's not really in their name. But it is a place, so here it is. There's always something new and interesting here, and that's why I like to feature it in these videos, because there's always changing items. Lots of glassware and different things like that. Typical long fluorescent fixtures that they set here on this counter. There's sometimes incandescent bulbs in these bins, but they seem to um, go away quite quickly, so people must be picking them up. Here's some older Sylvania 200 watt high pressure sodium bulbs. Pretty cool. I'm not sure where they got them out of something, obviously, but uh, there they are. There's some random lamp parts where I looked for the socket for the um, lamp. And of course, all the other random fixtures on this shelf as well. That dark room fixture there, that thing has been there forever. Here's some LED construction lights. Interesting, but this is a real interesting thing. It's a Cooper Lighting OVX. Pretty cool. I don't have one of these in my collection, but for $65, I don't feel like I need to add it to my collection right at this moment. But it is pretty cool, and it is brand new. So let's go ahead and take a closer look at the fixture itself. Inside the fixture, it is complete with a bulb. It is multi-tap, so you can get it in 120 volt. However, it looks like it is wired for 277 at the moment. I'm guessing it is new. Maybe it was in storage somewhere because there is a little bit of rust on the capacitor. But overall, it's in really good shape. It does have a photo cell on it, which does look like it also had a little bit of use. But overall, really cool to finally see and look at one of these in person and inside of the fixture. So here's the lamp that I picked up at the St. Vinny's. It's pretty cool. It is made by the Mutual Sunset Lamp Company. MSLC is what it says at the bottom of the lamp itself, which we can take a look at there. And it's model 29. And apparently it's a pretty 
well-known company for these older lamps. It doesn't have a shade and it didn't come with one, so I'll have to look around for a shade. It did come with this Sylvania incandescent bulb in it, but this other one is quite unique, as you can see. I picked this up today when I got the replacement um, socket here. Here's the original one. The inside part uh, where the pull chain connects and then rotates inside d just degraded so it didn't work anymore. This one is still original on this side, however, so it has, of course, the two pull chains for each lamp. So yeah, pretty cool. I'll have to do a video on it all by itself once I get a lampshade and things like that. But I replaced the cord inside. It had cloth wiring. I think it dates to maybe 30s or 40s. I could be wrong on that though. So if anybody knows, it is made out of brass though, which is pretty nice. Anyway, let's go ahead and talk about this bulb. Um, actually, no, let's talk about this socket just to get that out of the way. This is the packaging that it came in. Pretty cool old packaging. I thought I would share that before I get rid of it. Now we can talk about the bulb. This is a Sylvania 40 watt. This one here, Sylvania 40 watt, 125 volt bulb. This is the ATT17 shape. It is smaller than a typical A19 bulb, as you can see, but it has a really cool shape at the top of it. I'm not sure why, and I've looked on the lighting sites and I'm not sure if anybody else knows why either, but it has that really cool shape to it, and they both work. So, really cool bulbs. I'll have to do a separate video of them. Here's what I picked up at the ReStore with all the adapters in the box. This thing is pretty cool as it has some memories um, for me. It's a No Shock by Bell Electric Company. This was also available in outlets, not just an adapter like this. So it would have these um, circles on it that you'd have to rotate with your, um, your uh, plug. I don't know why I couldn't think of that because I'm trying to do it with my finger here. That you'd have to rotate with your plug to plug in whatever you wanted to plug in so that you couldn't, you know, stick your finger in there and get shocked, such as children and things like that. So it's a safety device. But what's so interesting about it for me is that my grandparents, when they lived in their cool old house in Milwaukee, um, they had an outlet uh, by their eating table in the kitchen that had these um, things on it. And it was an actual outlet instead of an adapter like this. But it's pretty cool to have this in my collection because it has memories to it. I remember playing with that thing because I thought it was so neat, of course. Probably not the best thing to do as a kid. And the other thing I picked up was an Apple 30-pin uh, plug that's actually made by Apple because why not? They're kind of getting harder to find, at least for myself. And I still have plenty of devices that use them. I still think these bulbs are pretty cool, though. They had some pretty neat things, but I went there specifically to find a socket for the lamp that uh, I showed you here just a second ago. It had the one broken socket. I tried to find that exact same um, ceramic socket, but they didn't have that. So we went to go do that because, well, there wasn't power, so what else is there to do when there's no power, no internet? You know, you can sit around and enjoy the apartment, but might as well go and get some things done. Before I stop this video, let's go ahead and take one last ride on the Alaska Way Viaduct, State Route 99. It is being closed here in January on the 11th in favor of the brand new tunnel that they have created. However, the tunnel will not open the same time that the viaduct is being closed, leaving a gap there where you can't get through that area without finding an alternative route. So let's go ahead and take one last ride on the viaduct and through the Battery Street Tunnel.
I think the viaduct and tunnel, the Battery Street one that is, are quite interesting. They do have some history behind them. The viaduct is shorter than it used to be many years ago, from what I have been told. But it's still an interesting piece and something that is definitely history. I really do hope you enjoyed this video, and also please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.